Hello, my name is Liam Gumbart, and I'm here today to interview Charles Darwin about his life and work. Mr. D, if I can call you that. My name is Charles Darwin. First, I'd like to ask Mr. Darwin, what's with the beard and hat? I dyed my beard brown and add some extensions to make myself look younger. My son went to Bavaria and bought me this hat. M Mr. D, if I can call you that. Absolutely not. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? My father was a physician named Robert Darwin. My mother was named Susanna Wedgwood Darwin. I was the youngest of two sons and the fourth youngest of five children. At age 30, I married my distant cousin, Emma Wedgwood. Together, we had 10 children, but only seven survived after I died. Charlie, can I call you Charlie? You may not. Okay, where did you go to school? Well, when I was young, I went to Shrewsbury School for seven years to learn the basic academics. And then later, I went to the University of Edinburgh in 1825 to learn medicine. However, I was not meant to learn medicine, so I'm, and my father quickly realized this. So in 1828, he sent me to the University of Cambridge to become a clergyman. Uh, a couple of years later, I earned my degree as a clergyman from the University of Cambridge. What did you do after you went to school? After I earned my degree as a clergyman, I studied geology with Adam Sedgwick. Later on in 1831, when we came back to North Wales, I received a letter from Mr. Henslow urging me to board the Beagle as a naturalist. Later in 1826, I boarded the Beagle as a naturalist to study the wildlife on the journey. Do people call you Chuck? No. Okay. What's the Beagle? The Beagle is an exploration vessel. So, so what do you do for a living? Besides a naturalist, I'm a writer, geologist, botanist, and biologist. What are some of the books you've written? The first book I wrote was titled On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. The first four chapters are about artificial and natural selection. The fifth chapter tells about the laws, variation, and changes to species other than natural selection. The next five chapters after that explain the obstacles that make it hard to believe in evolution and natural selection. The last three chapters, excluding the recapitulation, explain the evidence of evolution. Other books I wrote include The Variation of Animals and Plants Under Domestication, The Effects of Cross and Self-Fertilization in the Vegetable Kingdom, and The Descent of Man. What are some of the things you've researched? Most of the research that I took to write my books from my time on the Beagle. Uh, I took notes. I also noticed there were differences between 13 species of finches on the different locations of the Galapagos Island. The, the finches helped lead me to the realization of the theory of natural selection. As I was writing my own books, I read other people's research to get inspired to write my own books. Can you explain the theory of natural selection? The theory of natural selection states that individuals of a species may have beneficial mutations. Those beneficial mutations give the individual a higher chance of survival. That also means that the individuals have a higher chance of reproducing and passing on those beneficial traits. There are three distinct types of natural selection. The first type is directional selection. Directional selection is when nature favors one extreme trait over the other extreme. An example would be the 13 finches I was talking about. Over time, the food source of the finches may change. Therefore, individuals will develop different beak to eat the new food, and there will be fewer of the previous generation. And then as time goes on, the new generation will change to a newer extreme which eats a different type of food. The other type of natural selection is disruptive selection. Disruptive selection has nature favor both extremes. For example, if there's a frog that's normally bright green, if in one area, most of the surrounding environment is brown, it wouldn't survive very well if it was bright green. So over time, this species would develop camouflage that was brown. 
so there will be fewer of the previous generation of bright green frogs. The last type of natural selection is stabilizing selection. Nature will favor the bulk of the average organism if they're well adapted to their environment and other surrounding features. An example would be turkeys. Naturally, turkeys are brown. Somewhere along the line, you'll get an albino turkey, which is white. The average organisms are the brown turkeys, and the extreme would be the white turkey. And there are fewer extreme turkeys because the white turkey in its environment would be seen easier and killed. But the bulk of the average turkey would be saved because of their natural brown camouflage. Okay, I'm going to call you Chucky D. Chucky D is okay. Explain a normal day in the life of Chucky D. A normal day for me is waking up early and then going for a walk at 7.45. After the walk, I come back in and eat some breakfast. After eating breakfast, I go to work for one and a half hours. Then I take a break and read and write until 10.30, in which I start working again. At 12 o'clock, I consider the day's work done and go for another walk. I come back and eat some lunch, then read and write. I take another walk, then come back in and relax and smoke until dinner at seven o'clock. After dinner, I play back home and read and enjoy some music until 10 o'clock when I go to bed. Thank you, Charles Darwin, for taking some of your time to give this wonderful interview. You're welcome. Thank you, audience, for taking some of your time to watch this. <laughs>